Hello students, uh, so in the previous class we started with undamped forced oscillation, before that we did undamped and damped free oscillations that means they were free from any external forces. Uh, in the previous class uh, we started with undamped forced oscillation, we derived uh, a particular case where we uh, looked into the part where uh, omega 0 is not equal to the uh, frequency uh, of the oscillation and then we also worked out one example, right. So, today we um, will uh, derive the second part of it uh, which is uh, when omega 0 is equal to the frequency and uh, how does the solution will look like and then we will move on to the damped forced oscillation, right. If time permits then we will look into one more example as well, okay. So, uh, we derived up to this part. So, we did uh, case 1, um, where is that uh, here. So, case 1, case 1 was uh, when omega 0 is not equals to omega. So, we wrote down our solution y t as a c 1 um, cos of omega t plus c 2. Uh, so, c 2, uh, no, this was com cos of omega 0 t and c 2 uh, sin of omega 0 t, then uh, we had f 0 by m, uh, what was it? Omega 0 whole square minus of omega square and this one was cos of omega t. So, this is the solution when uh, omega 0 is not equals to omega. Okay. Now, let us go to the case when omega 0 is equals to omega. As I was saying that uh, the way to find out this particular integral is very standard. You can find in any textbook for uh, second order or higher order um, linear differential equation, ordinary of course, uh, with non-homogeneous type, that uh, non-homogeneous right hand side. So, then in that case you need to find out the uh, particular integral. And uh, if uh, d square, uh, if omega 0 is not equal to omega, then in that case you can put d square equals to minus of uh, uh, a square or minus of omega square and if it is equal then basically uh, we do that uh, d plus a and uh, we check whether d plus a uh, will become 0 or not and from there we calculate the particular integral, right. So, we instead of putting uh, d square equals to minus of a square, uh, we do d plus a and then we will do the further calculation to calculate the particular integral. If I do that, then it will consume a lot of time. So, I will write down the answer directly, but you can refer the calculation in our next chapter. From the next chapter, you can learn how to calculate this particular integral, right. So, complementary function part is same. So, y t equals to y c is same. It is just that the particular integral, the particular integral will change a little bit and it will become y p t that it will be 1 by uh, f d of um, we will have f 0 by m into cos of omega t. f 0 by m is not causing any trouble. So, it will just simply come outside and then we will have 1 by f d uh, cos of omega t and uh, f t is basically f 0. This is basically our d square, um, sorry there is no d 0, d, d square plus omega 0 whole square into cos of omega t. Since uh, they are equal when we substitute d square equals to minus of a square it will create a uh, problem. So, therefore, uh, we put d instead of d we put uh, d plus a or d minus a and from there we calculate the particular integral. If we do that then finally, we will obtain f 0 by m and uh, this will be t uh, 1 by 2 uh, t sin of uh, omega 0 t. So, altogether it will become 1 by 2 m f 0 t sin of omega 0 t. You can keep it just for the time being and uh, the, the method from here to here we will learn in the coming classes, right. So, from here we can write down the complete solution. The uh, required solution or the required complete solution. The required solution is given by y t is equals to y um, c which is basically c 1 into cos of omega 0 t plus c 2 into sin of omega 0 into t 
plus 1 by 2 m uh, f 0 t sin of omega 0 t. Right. So, this is the required uh, complete solution of the given um, second order ordinary differential equation with non homogeneous right hand side, which actually represents your forced damped oscillation when uh, your omega 0, which is basically the, this k by m um, is actually equal to the um, frequency. So, a lot of uh, terminologies that, has go, that, that, that is going on. right? And uh, of course, we can consider an example of uh, previous type where instead of taking omega equals to um, 10, 11 by 10, we can take omega equals to um, simply um, same. That means, uh, if I go back to the previous example from the last class, uh, we can have um, uh, the same in a mass spring k is equals to 1, m is 1, f 0 is 1 and all those things. You can keep it here also. So, from previous example, from previous example, let us take k is equals to 1, m is equals to 1, omega 0 equals to omega equals to 1 and f 0 as 1. Right. So, then the equation of motion will be y double dash plus y is equals to cos of t right and uh, y at 0 is equals to 0 and y dash at 0 is equals to 0 right. So, same as whatever we had in the example 1, we will keep that same, it is just that we are using omega 0 equals to omega. So, then the solution will be given by from case 2. So, from case 2, uh, the required solution, the required solution y t becomes or is given by uh, becomes uh, y t is equals to this is together becomes uh, y t is equals to c 1 cos of omega 0 t which is 1. So, cos of t plus c 2 uh, sin of t uh, plus f 0 by 2 m omega 0 that is 1 m is also 1. So, this is simply f 0 by 2 uh, t into sin of t because omega 0 is also 1. So, this is the required solution. Now, we can determine c 1 and c 2 using f at 0 equals to 0 or y at 0 sorry uh, y at 0. Uh, we can determine c 1 and c 2 by y at 0 equals to 0 and y dash at 0 equals to 0 and somewhat it will look similar to whatever constant we had in the previous example right and uh, of course here we can also see that uh, the 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 function is basically mixture of cos and sin right so it will be an oscillating type uh, uh, graph for yt okay now the very last topic in this regard is the damped forced oscillation damped forced oscillations oscillations okay so analogously when we had undamped forced oscillation we are uh, considering the damping coefficient om gamma as 0 now here your gamma will also be present k will be present not only that the right hand side will also be there so with uh, the similar anal analogy with the similar analogy similar analogy, we have uh, y double dash, then uh, 2 zeta uh, omega 0 y dash plus omega 0 whole square into y, right, uh, f 0 by m cos of omega t and uh, y at 0 is equals to y 0 and y dash at 0 equals to y 1 0. Let us call it as equation number 1, 2, 3, where, where 
our zeta is um, gamma by s 2 square root of k m and uh, omega 0 is simply k by m right and uh, what else yeah that is pretty much it. So, these are the two uh, parameters that we have introduced. I am just going to write down their definition uh, if, if I had in the previous class. So, this is the damping ratio, right. So, this is called as damping ratio, damping ratio and I think it is gamma by 2 square root of km, right and this is positive all the time, uh, damping ratio and uh, omega 0 is as usual the, uh, uh, the this uh, k ratio k by m. And uh, finally, our equation reduces to this. So, this is somewhat looking similar to what we had for damped free oscillation. It is just that here our right hand side is uh, non zero, correct. So, um, this is damping ratio. So, where uh, we have this F0 uh, cos of omega t, cos of omega t is a periodic driving force, is a periodic periodic uh, driving force, periodic driving force. So, in this physical setting, in this physical setting, in this physical setting, uh, the complementary function, the complementary function um, with uh, fully determined coefficient, fully determined coefficients, coefficients uh, or constants whatever fully determined coefficients or constants uh, or, or constants. is called, so there is a terminology, is called transient solution, transient solution and uh, the particular solution and the particular solution is called the steady state solution. This has nothing to do with the derivation that we are doing, it is just that it is nice to know these definitions that is that is all ok. And uh, and uh, um, the form, uh, the form of the transient uh, component component uh, depends on the type of the damping on the type of damping obviously because now it involves gamma gamma actually tells us the uh, damping is it is actually the damping coefficient. So, since uh, now the solution involves gamma, so basically the transient solution actually uh, depends on the type of damping we have and at the same time uh, we can write at the same time uh, what do we have uh, at the same time. the right hand side the right hand side uh, of the equation of the equation indicates that the forced response response 
is a linear combination is a linear combination of cos of omega t then and sin of omega t which can be which uh, can be brought to the form of or can be brought to the form of a cos of omega t minus phi right so somewhat similar to what we had um, uh, in the uh, damped free oscillation so in the damped free oscillation also we introduce these uh, parameters uh, these parameter gamma and uh, there we uh, try to write the solution as uh, a sin omega t uh, sorry a cos omega t minus phi um, because we can determine these uh, uh, constants and then it can be put together as this uh, cos a minus b or cos a plus b that formula right and uh, yeah so this is um, what we uh, wanted to uh, derive or wanted to say because uh, we can derive the complementary function just like the way we did for the um, uh, damped free oscillation and we can also determine the particular integral now based on which we can write down the solution right um, we can uh, work out one example uh, for damped free or uh, damped forced oscillation so let us consider one example so the position y t the position y t uh, at a time t at time t positive um, of a unit mass of a unit mass uh, in a system in a system with gamma equals to 0 with gamma equals to uh, gamma equals to 5 if it is 0 then it will become uh, uh, undamped so with gamma is equals to 5 and k is equals to 4 and k is equals to 4 uh, which starts moving from the point uh, which starts moving uh, which starts uh, moving from the point uh, 13 with initial velocity of minus 95 and uh, is uh, acted uh, upon by a periodic uh, external force external force of amplitude of amplitude 34 and frequency 1. and frequency 1 is a solution of the initial value problem uh, y double dash plus 5 y dash plus 4 y is equals to. Um, so, we have uh, k as 4 so that is 4 y we have gamma as 5 and then on the right hand side our uh, f 0 so that is uh, uh, given by uh, 34 cos of t and uh, y at 0 is equals to 13 and y dash at 0 is equals to minus of 95. So, let us call it as equation 1, 2 and 3. 
a very very fairly simple uh, second order ordinary differential equation if you know how to solve the right hand side because for the left hand side it is very easy to write down the complementary function. All right. Uh, so, the complementary function can be determined as um, so the complementary function uh, of 1 the complementary function of 1 can be determined determined from y double dash plus 5 y plus 4 y equals to 0. So, that means, we can form the auxiliary equation i e uh, the auxiliary equation auxiliary equation will be m square plus 5 m plus 4 equals to 0. So, from here it will imply m plus 4 times m plus 1 equals to 0. So, we will get m is equals to minus of 1 minus of 4 and uh, complementary function can be determined from this that is the auxiliary equation is this and uh, this uh, auxiliary equation is this and therefore, and uh, therefore, y c t that means, the com complementary function um, this will be um, what is it then c 1 times e to the power minus of t plus c 2 times e to the power minus of 4 t. So, at least uh, complementary function is known. Now, particular integral not that difficult we can determine like this. Next we determine we can write next we shall determine the particular integral we shall determine the particular integral as uh, y p t which is basically 1 by d square plus 5 d plus 4 right. I hope so yeah and then this is uh, 34 uh, cos of t all right. So, 34 obviously will come on this side and this will become 1 by. Uh, so, we will substitute d square equals to minus of uh, a square. So, that will become uh, 5. So, th this will become minus 1 and that is 5 d plus 3 into cos t and uh, then you can take uh, 3 by 5 out and uh, from there we can uh, uh, try to. Uh, so, from here we can basically um, multiply the numerator and denominator by um, d minus 3 by 5 right and then we can substitute. Um, so, it is just a simple calculation. So, we can multi, we can take the 3 by 5 out. So, if we take the 3 by 5 out then it will become uh, d plus. Uh, uh, so, we are taking no sorry we will take 5 by 3 out. So, we are taking 5 by 3 out and this will become d plus um, d plus. Uh, so, we are taking uh, sorry the, we are taking 5 out if we take 5 out then this will become d plus 3 by 5 right. So, not 5 by 3 or 3 by 5 we are taking d by. Uh, so, let us erase all this. So, we are simply taking 5 out right. So, we are taking 5 out and uh, here we have cos of t and then we multiply both numerator and denominator by uh, d minus 3 by 5. So, this will become d minus 3 by 5 here it will become d square minus uh, 9 by 25. I am little sloppy in calculation. So, you have to just double check my calculation. So, now here you can substitute d square equals to minus of a square again and uh, then it will become minus 1 and uh, 34 by 5 into d minus 3 by 5 this will become minus 1 minus 9 by 25 and then cos of t then this cos will be charged here then minus 3 by 5 and so on. So, if you do all this calculation something will also cancel out uh, this will come out as a very nice expression 3 cos t I believe plus 5 sin t something like this will come out.
right because d of cos t so that means you are doing d dt of cos t um, so whatever negative sign it will bear and then you will have minus 3 by 5 uh, cos t so I can see one 5 is getting cancelled here 34 will get cancelled so it will come out to be a very nice expression here. So therefore the required uh, or not required because uh, required we will use when we determine C1 and C2. So therefore uh, that is okay. So we can write the required solution uh, is given by does not matter we can still determine given by y t equals to y c t plus y p t. So, y c t is a c 1 e to the power minus of t plus c 2 e to the power minus of 4 t plus 3 cos t plus 5 sin t right. Now, from here we will use the uh, initial condition y at 0 and y dash at 0 uh, whatever value we have mentioned here let us go back to the previous slide. So, these two values we can use to determine C1 and C2, right. So, by using initial conditions, by using initial conditions, conditions, we can determine, we can determine C1 and C2, C1 and C2, and this gives this gives our y t as uh, so c 1 will come out to be th uh, uh, minus of 20. So, I will write the positive one first. So, e to the power minus 30 into e to the power minus of 40 minus of 20 into e to the power minus of t plus 3 cos t plus 5 sin t. You can just double check whatever I have written here. Maybe these numbers if they are incorrect you can try to rectify it, but the idea is same. You put t is equals to 0 and use the information y 0 equals to whatever value is given then you again do the derivative and then you put t equals to 0 and use the value of y dash 0. From there we can calculate and this will be the required solution. And uh, the transient solution then is so the transient the transient solution 30 e to the power minus of 40 and 20 e to the power minus of t uh, decays rapidly, decays rapidly. Obviously, when t tends to infinity, they both go to 0, but uh, it goes really rapidly as t increases. And the forced response, the forced response. 3 cos t plus 5 sin t plus 5 sin t has as expected the oscillatory behavior, the oscillatory behavior, behavior. Okay. Uh, I am not sure if it is O U R or simply O R. So, that you can verify. Uh, oscillatory behavior and um, quickly becomes dominant and quickly becomes dominant. Dominant. That means, remain, uh, remainder of the motion as T progresses, it will remain periodic in that or oscillatory in that sense. So, performing the ne uh, necessary computation, you can determine the, uh, the amp this uh, amplitude and the phase. Uh, so, the amplitude A will be given by square root of uh, 3 square plus 5 square. So, that will be simply square root of 34 and the phase that means uh, this uh, uh, phi can be given by tan inverse of uh, 5 by 3, right. Okay, so, this is approximately equal to 1.03, this you can calculate from some calculator. So, therefore, hence the forced response can be approximated or can be approximated as approximated as uh, A, that means the square root of 34 cos of uh, omega t, uh, so omega uh, uh, that is 1, so t minus uh, 1.03. So, if we plot 
the solution. So, the solution will look like something like this. So, this is T and then uh, this is uh, Y T right and uh, here we have 5, then we have 10. So, it will start somewhere here, then it will rapidly drop, then this is 2 uh, and then it will start oscillating and so on. So, it dropped immediately and then it became oscillatory. So, here we have uh, uh, 0, then somewhere we have 2. Uh, so, it dropped then somewhere we have I do not know 2, then we have 4. Um, so I mean it may not be equidistant. Okay, So, do not worry about it. I mean uh, I am not very good at drawing, but uh, you got the message right uh, 12, 14 and so on. So, um, in this case, in case of forced uh, damped forced oscillation, we see that the uh, this um, transient solution for this particular example, it decays immediately and the, the force response is actually the one which is dominant. So, that is the one which is giving us this nice oscillatory behavior of this uh, mass spring, right. So, we have covered uh, actually undamped forced oscillation, there also we obtain the solution and we consider one example. In case of damped forced oscillation, we also obtain the solution and we showed, uh, uh, we, we showed one example as well. So, this was, this is what uh, or these are the topics that I wanted to talk about in this chapter. So, uh, the basically we, uh, we have completed this one and in the next class we will start with uh, higher order uh, differential equations, right. Uh, so, that means second order or third order and there we will learn uh, methods to um, uh, solve basically this FD operator and all that we will learn more in detail, alright. So, thank you for your attention and I will see you in the next class.